Hey, what's up? Welcome back to this new video. This one is paper 32 of May, June 2013. Um, obviously, we'll try our best to explain everything as uh, simple as possible. With that being said, let's move on to the questions we have for you today. So here we have question number one. Solving the equation means finding the value of x in this equation. Now, here we have modulus on both sides and we have x on both sides. Right? So in this case, we have to square both sides. Now, there's obviously other ways of solving this by sketching graphs, but again, you don't want to sketch graph. <laughs> you, don't want to waste, you don't want to waste your time doing those things right now, right? So square both sides, you will have x minus 2 square is equal to 1 over 3x square. You will have x square minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 1 over 9x square. Now, something here, how do you expand this directly? We should know, well, a minus b square, if you were to expand, it will be a square. 2 times this times this become minus 2ab plus b square. Okay, this is how you will expand this one in this question. Well, in this case, you can, of course, uh, just put this plus here, don't confuse you guys, in this way. So you will have this expansion as such, and here you have this to replace a by this one and b by minus 2 to have this. Now, I don't like to work, to work with fractions. What can I do? I can always simplify by multiplying every one by the value of 9 below. You will have 9 x squared minus 36x plus 36 is equal to 1 x squared. Now send everything to one side. Let's see what happens. You will have the value over here becomes 9 minus 1 will become 8 x squared minus 36x plus 36 is 0. Now simplify. Divide by 4 everywhere. Let's see what happens. You will have 2 x squared minus, uh, this will become what? 9, 9x plus 9 equal to 0. So now we have a simple quadratic equation. We can solve by using your formula if you want to, or you can use by factorization as well. Let's see what can we do. 2x squared is 2x times x. 9 is uh, 3 times 3. To get minus 9, we have to have minus 6. So 2x times this become minus 6. And minus 3 to have minus 9. Minus, minus becomes plus. So this is good to go. This is confirm the right factorization. So x will be the value of 3 over 2. x will be the value of 3. So these are the answers for question number 1. But again, how do we check for factorization? For example, I have 2x squared over here minus 9x plus 9. Factorize again. Again, I'm doing this by trial, which means I don't know the answer yet. I'm just trying things out to see what happens. Now, this is 9, 3 times 3. Now, of course, we always have to take the first one, multiply by the last one, and then this times this. Now, for it to become minus 9, we have to have minus 6, so 2x times minus 3 become minus 6, and then minus 3, so minus 6 minus 3 becomes minus 9. Now, this is not over. You have to always check, always check, this one, minus times minus becomes plus, and here we have plus, so now we confirm it is good. So this is the right factorization and right way of checking if it's good or not. And that is your question number one. Now let's move on to question number two. So here the sequence of values given by this formula, okay, with initial value of x equal to 3.5. So using this as your initial value, converges to alpha. Now, using this formula, we have to calculate alpha to four decimal place, showing the result to six decimal place. Wow, that's a lot. So let's see. Um, we have to find. We know x1 has been given to you by the value of 3.5. We have to find these rests, the rest by, using the formula by iteration, and see where they converges to the value that we need. But again, here we have to provide each value to correct to six decimal place, which is crazy. But anyways, let's do this. The first value we have is 3.5. This is your answer. Good to know. Then we have to plug them in the formula right here. This bracket answer times answer cube plus 100 divided by 2 times answer cube plus 25. There you go. So once you have this done, you just press equal to every single time. That will be 3.683702. Okay, six decimal place. Yeah, that's a lot. So keep going. That will be 
3.684031. Okay, so it simply stops right here. 684031. So wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it seems to converge at this value, so we can stop right here. So this, from this, we can see clearly that the value of alpha, which is x basically, is equal to, for decimal place, that should be 3.6840. Correct to four decimal place. Now question, we have to state an equation satisfied by alpha, which is this equation right here, and hence find the exact value of alpha. So one by one, how would you find that equation? Pretty easy. Step number one, let's remove all these subscript. You will have x equal to x times x cubed plus 100 divided by the value of 2 x cubed plus 25. Now we have to simplify and see what can this become. Again, trust the process. I even don't know what's going to happen. I'm just trying to step by step solve this one by one. So usually we do cross multiply. You will have 2 x times this one equal to x power 4 plus the value of 100x. Okay. Now simplify. You will have the value of what? Expand, you will have 2 x power 4 plus uh, 25 times 2 will be 50x is equal to x power 4 plus 100x. Now send everything to one side, this over here you will have 2 minus 1 will be x power 4 plus 50 minus 100, that will be minus 50x, have to be 0. Now obviously here we have to uh, use some uh, knowledge. For example, I can factorize or you can divide by x. Let's factorize, you will have this one, power 3 minus 50. Now x could be 0, obviously, or x could be the power. This one is 0. You will not be using this one here because you can see clearly x, the value here, was given to you by 3.5, so we will not be using the value of 0. We will use the other value according to your question. Now, x cubed will be 50. Thus, the exact value will be cubic root of 50 will be the exact value of alpha. Alpha or x, the same thing right here. That will be your answer for question part 2 of number 2. Now let's move on to question number 3. So here we have variables x and y. Satisfy the equation y. y equal to a exponential minus k x squared. Great. Now where a and k are constants. Okay, good to know. Now here, using this, we have a graph of ln of y, as you can see, ln of y and x squared. It is a straight line. So whenever we mention straight line, we should know what is the usual equation of a straight line. So whenever you have y against x, straight line will be y equal to mx plus c. That's what we should know already for those kind of questions, usually. But now clearly we have ln of y against x squared. So let's replace y was y here. So now we have ln of y equal to m x squared plus c. So this is the equation of a straight line we will have for this case. We have to use this as comparison. Now, the graph of ln of y uh, da -da -da, is passes through those two points. So we have a passing point right here and right here, as shown in the diagram. Now, find the values of a and k correct to two decimal places. OK, so one by one. So we have to break down the formula using logarithms. So at first, we have y equal to a exponential minus kx squared. Now, since we have ln of y on, both, on this side, we have to apply ln of y. But obviously, you have to apply both sides because you don't want to change the equation. You have you want to, of course, apply both sides. So it becomes it's the same thing you're using, right? That's the reason why. Okay, whenever you apply ln, apply both sides so you don't change the main equation of the of the question that they give you. Now we have to break it down. This will be ln of a plus ln of e power this one. Now, we know by the laws of logarithms, we can send this one in front. You will have minus k x squared. This will become, so ln of e, it is log to the base of e, e. When these are the same, it will be just one. So it will cancel out. Plus ln of, of a. So by comparison, we have this is equal to this. Now you can clearly see 
we have ln of y equal to m x squared plus c for the equation of a straight line with these two variables. Now by comparison, you can know, well, this is clearly your gradient, and this is your y-intercept, as you can see. So first value we can find is the gradient. So here we have a zero point, this one. This is the passing point that we have for those two. This is uh, obviously, we can use our formula. The gradient have to be the value of this one, minus this one, divided by this one, minus this one. Let's see what happens. So you have 0 0.32 minus 0 0.76 divided by 1.69 minus 0 0.64. That should be minus 44 over 105 for your gradient. Now this is your gradient m. Now we know m is equal to minus k, which is equal to minus 44 over 105. Thus k will be the value of 44 over 105, but here we have to provide the value correct to two decimal place. That will be 0 0.42 will be your value of k in this case. Great. Now, we found the value of k, we can find the value of a pretty easily as well using a passing point. So here the passing point is 0 0.64 and 0 0.76. Now, because we have a graph of ln of y against x squared, so instead of x, this will be my x squared, this will be my ln of y. Replace back in your main equation, ln of y is 0 0.76 is equal to minus k, so minus uh, 44 over 105, and here we have uh, x squared, which is 0 0.64 plus ln of a, which is what we're trying to find. Now simplify and everything on one side, you will have minus 44 divided by 105 times 0 0.64 is this one. Now 0 0.76, we send this over here, become plus your answer, you will have this one. So 0 point, sorry, 0 point, so we have 44 over the value of this one times 0 0.64 for this one. Now 0 0.76 plus answer, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting the plus value. This one again, try again, you have this times 0 0.64. 0 0.76 plus this one will be 1.02819 is equal to ln of a. So here we have to find the value of a. a will be simply exponential of the value over here. So exponential, that will be, a will be 2.80, correct, to two decimal place. So one thing we should know here, let's say we have to solve ln of a equal to x. To find the value inside, have to send the base over here. Now we know ln is log to the base of e, so that will be, to find this one, send the base e over here, that will be a equal to exponential x. So similarly, to find the value on the inside, send the base over here, you will have exponential this, and this will be your value for two decimal place for the value of a and k right here. This is your question number three. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.